church and uh, good morning viewers it's always a joy and a blessing to connect with you wherever you are <clears throat> it's our prayer and uh, our great joy that everything it is going on very well if you met the most high in your dwelling even the lord who is my refuge then no harm will be for you no plan shall come near your tent. Psalm 91, verse 9. Though we are surrounded with a great fear by the rapidly evolving situation of the coronavirus, we need to do our part of prayer and fasting. We can be rest assured that we have a Father in heaven who is with us always. We walk the way of the cross each year with our Lord Jesus and yet with every step we are taught something new about us and about God. We have suddenly realized the value of all, the, all that we took for granted and never appreciated, including the joy of seeing one another when we come to worship as one family. We are now spread far and wide. Yet as faithful warriors of Christ, we walk together in spirit. We pray together in spirit. This Friday and every Friday of Lent, let us strengthen our spirit by fasting and, pen and penance to the overcome the, vi the virus threatening our lives. As we reflect on the station of the cross, let us employ God's mercy on us to halt the spread of the coronavirus and heal those who are suffering and make us stronger in mind, body, and faith. The first station. Jesus is condemned to death. Luke chapter 23, verse 13 to 25. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by the Holy Cross, you have redeemed the world. A spy that shows the law can be used as a weapon against the weak, Jesus stands with those unjustly deprived of their liberty land and future. Let us pray. Our Lord Jesus, the global pandemic that is upon us, make us feel as though the world has been condemned. Give us the courage to not be afraid or be discouraged and to stand firm in our faith and face this pandemic brevity. We pray for all nations and people that have been affected by this invisible enemy. Amen. The second station, Jesus is laden with the cross. John 19, verse 17. We adore you, O Christ, and bless you, because by the Holy cross you have redeemed the world. The weight of our cross is only lightened by responding to Christ's invitation to come to him. May our own way of the cross lead us to Him. Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus, today as we battle this pandemic, we can feel the weight of your cross that you carried on your sacred shoulders. Just as you took responsibility for our sins, give us the grace to take up the cross and take responsibility for the 
national level and third at what has manifested at a collective level. Amen. The third station. Jesus for the first time. John 15, 18 to 20. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because of your holy promises, you have redeemed the world. Each fall of Jesus is a sign of human vitality, but also a false test of his resurrection, which will break the chains of death to bring us salvation. Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus, today as we contemplate on your fall, first fall, let us ponder over the failure of men to report and contain this virus that has spread globally. We pray for those who are already infected with this virus that they may receive prompt, effective, and compassionate medical care that will restore them to health. Amen. section, Jesus meets his mother, John 19, 25 to 27. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As Jesus proceeded on his way, he met his mother. What a meeting that must have been. What must have been the compassion of that son for his holy mother? Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus, we pray for all those who face tribal restriction and cannot come home to their countries and families. We pray for those under quarantine that they might be comforted by your presence and protected from disease anxiety and fear. Just as you were close to your son, be close to us, especially though quarantined. Oh, blessed God, in our need, be the help of the hopeless. Amen. Simon of Cyrus helps Jesus to carry his cross. Luke chapter 23, verse 26. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. 
because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Although it seems that Simon is just plucked from the crowd, it is the Father who is sending help to his Son. Those who help others are doing God's work. And we too are called to pray our part. Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus, just as Simon helped you to carry your cross, we pray for protection and grace for all the medical professionals all over the world who are courageously treating those infected with coronavirus. May they be shielded, strengthened, and guided by the administer as they administer healing, treatment, and care through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Station 7, Jesus Falls the Second Time, Isaiah chapter number 53, verse 4 to 6. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because of your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. His strength falls, fails him, and Jesus falls the second time. Sometimes it is difficult for us to carry on and complete things. We often want to give up and end up falling again and again. Let us pray. O Lord God Almighty, we pray that through our failures, you may draw us closer to you, grow our compassion, and increase our knowledge. In this hour of an unusual crisis, we come to you, ask for unusual strength to stand up, defeat this invisible enemy, and rise again as one united world. Amen. The eighth station, Jesus consoles the woman of Jerusalem. Luke 23, verse 27 to 28. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because of your holy cross, and we redeem the world. For the woman of Jerusalem, the meeting with Jesus is a tearful moment. 
but amidst the tears of the present, we are called to look forward to the hope of the resurrection. Let us pray. God of mercy, be with the tens of thousands of people who have contracted this virus around the world. Dear Jesus, just as you comforted the woman of Jerusalem, comfort and console those whose loved ones have died. For it is written, even when the doors of heaven are closed to prayer, they are open to tears. May our tears reach you, O Lord. Amen. The stanza. Station. Jesus is stripped, stripped off his garments. Matthew 27, 34 to 35. We adore you, O Christ, and bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. All that Jesus has is taken from him. Even the clothes is wearing. When we work to restore the rights of the honor, we hope to inherit the kingdom of God. Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus, we pray for those who are stripped of their rights and dignity. We repent of our shameful deeds. We are sorry for what has come upon man. We pray for all those whose lives are disrupted by this pandemic epidemic. We pray for families, 
who have been separated and for those whose livelihoods have been jeopardized. Amen. The eleventh station. Jesus is nailed on the cross. Luke 23, verse 33 to 34. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus was in terrible and pure agony when these nails were pierced in his hands. Imagine the combined love of God and Jesus for us. God's love to crucify his son and the son's love to die for us. No one understands better pain than God and Jesus. Let us pray. Oh Lord Jesus, today we feel as though this virus has nailed the whole world. Life has come to a grinding halt. We pray for the communities, areas, and countries hardest hit. Restore their sense of well-being and community. Sustain them, comfort them, and give them all. Amen. Station. Jesus dies on the cross. Luke chapter 23, verse 44 to 46. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The dying of Jesus rewrites the story. When confronted with our own death, God is there. In the valley of darkness, He is our light. Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus, today we pray for those who are currently battling between life and death. We pray for the thousand of souls who have lost their lives. We pray for the researchers who are tracking the cause of this virus, that they may uncover patterns that will help us save precious innocent lives across the world. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A stanza. We adore you, Christ, 
and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Jesus' body was taken off the cross and placed in the arms of Mary, his mother. Imagine how she must have felt. Lord, we remember all those who have carried the cross in this life and now rest in your peace. Let us pray. We look to you, O oh God, praying that the spread of this coronavirus will be halted and that many lives might be spared. We pray that through this crisis you may draw us closer to you, grow our compassion, and increase our knowledge. Amen. station, Jesus is laid in the tomb, Matthew 27, verses 59 and 60. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. What looks like an ending is in fact a beginning. The death of Jesus brings a new life for us. The virus has not come to end life. It has come to make us reflect on the way we have lived so far and how we have treated nature and other forms of life. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, in the face of death, we have begun to understand and feel for lesser life forms that cannot defend or protect themselves. We are gradually waking up to the reality that the whole earth is one family. O oh Lord Jesus, give us the grace to bury all our differences and to act and think like one big family, to make choices for the greater good of humanity. Amen. The concluding prayers for the first part of the Stations of the Cross. Thank you, dear great physician, who not only heals us, but who is a very present help in our time of need. As the Bible tells us that you took up all our infirmities and carried our diseases. Jesus Christ, you traveled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. As the world erupts in panic, we turn to you in our special needs. Calm our fears. Increase our trust. Whether we are home or abroad, surrounded by many people suffering from this illness, or only a few, Jesus Christ, stay with us as we endure and mourn, persist and prepare. In place of our anxiety, give us your peace.
First reading is written in the book of Isaiah, chapter chapter 52, reading from verse 13 to the end. Then we we'll go to chapter 23, verse 1 to 10. See. My servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were men who were astonished at him, so mad was his appearance beyond human resemblance, and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall tattle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouth because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall interpret. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord had been viewed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground. 
he had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire for him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces. He was despised and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we have counted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us all, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity, the equity of us all. He was oppressed and was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is laid to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a preservation of just, justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of living, stricken by the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the leech, although he had done no violence. And there was no descent in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offering, offspring, and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord will prosper. Hear the word of the Lord. The response to our prayers is hear us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have sinned against thee. To thee, Redeemer, on thy throne of glory, lift we our weeping eyes in holy pleadings. Listen, O Jesus to our supplications. Hear us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have sinned against thee. O thou chief cornerstone, right hand of the Father, way of salvation, get of life, Ecclesiastes, cleanse thou our sinful souls, from all defilement. Hear us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have sinned against you. God, we implore thee in thy glory seated, bow down and hearken to thy weeping children. Pity and pardon all our grievous trespasses. Hear us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have sinned against thee. Sins oft committed now we lay before thee. With true continue now, no.
no more we fail them. Grant us, Redeemer, loving absolution. Hear us, O oh Lord. Have mercy upon us, for we have sinned against thee. Innocent, captive, taken, and resisted, falsely accused, and for us sinners sentenced. Save us, we pray thee, Jesu our Redeemer. Hear us, O oh Lord. Have mercy upon us, for we have sinned against thee. Second reading is a letter of Paul to the Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 14 through to chapter 5 to 10. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but we have one who in every respect has been tested, and we are yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of God of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subjected to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten, begotten you. As he says also in other places, you are my priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with a loud cries and tears the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Hear the word of the Lord. A stanza as those that are doing the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ are coming in front. For those that are participating in doing the passion, you can come in front. 
as one to lead us in one stanza. When I Jesus the Nazareth. He said, I am he. Now Judas the traitor was standing among them. When Jesus said, I am he, they moved back and fell to the ground. He asked them, a second time. Who are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazareth. Jesus replied, I have told you that I am He. If I am the one you are looking for, let these others go. This was to fulfill the words he had spoken. Not one of those you gave me have I lost. Simon Peter, who carried a sword, drew it and wounded the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Marcus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in its cup. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? The cohort and its captain and the Jewish guards seized Jesus and bound him. 
They took him first to Annas, because Annas was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had suggested to the Jews, it is better for one man to die for the people. Simon Peter, with another disciple, followed Jesus. This disciple, who was known to the high priest, went with Jesus into the high priest's palace. But Peter stayed outside the door. So the other disciple, the one known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who was keeping the door, and brought Peter in. The maid on duty at the door said to Peter, Aren't you another of that man's disciples? He answered, I am not. Now, it was cold, and the servants and the guards had lit a charcoal fire and were standing there warming themselves. So Peter stood there too, warming himself with the others. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly for all the world to hear. I have always taught in the synagogue and in the temple where all the Jews meet together. I have said nothing in secret, but why ask me? Ask my hearers what I taught. They know what I said. At these words, one of the guards standing by Jesus gave Jesus a slap in the face, saying, Is that the way to answer the high priest? Jesus replied, If there is something wrong in what I said, point it out. But if there is no offense in it, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him, still bound, to Caiaphas, the high priest. As Simon Peter stood there, warming himself, someone said to him, Ain't you another of his disciples? He denied it, saying, Ah, I don't. One of the high priest's servants, a relation of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, said, did I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at once, the cock crew. They then led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was now morning. They did not go into the Praetorium themselves, or they would be defiled and unable to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They replied, If you are not a criminal, we should, we should be handed over to you. yourself and try him by your own law. The Jews answered, We are not allowed to put a man to death. This was to fulfill the words Jesus had spoken 
indicating the way he was going to die. So Pilate went back into the Praetorium and called Jesus to him and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, Do you ask me this?
That is why the one who handed me over to you has the greater gift. From that moment, Pilate was anxious to set him free. But the Jews shouted, If you set him free, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who makes himself king is the father of Caesar. Hearing these words, Pilate had Jesus brought out and seated himself on the chair of judgment at a place called the pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was Passover preparation day, about the sixth hour. Pilate said to the Jews, here is your king. They said, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said, Do you want me to crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king except Caesar. So, in the end, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. They then took charge of Jesus and carrying his own cross, he went out of the city to the place of the skull, or as it was called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him with two others. One on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate wrote out a notice and had it fixed to the cross. It ran, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. This notice was read by many of the Jews because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city, and the writing was in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the Jewish priest said to Pilate, You should not try the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had finished crucifying Jesus, they took his clothing and divided it into four shares, one for each soldier. His undergarment was seamless, woven in one piece from neck to hem. So they said to one another, Instead of tearing it, let's throw this to the side. Who is to have it? In this way, words of scripture were fulfilled. They shared out my clothing among them. They cast lots for my clothes. This is exactly what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clophus, and Mary of Nagdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then, to the disciple, he said, This is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple made a place for her in his home. After this, Jesus knew that everything had now been completed. And to fulfill the scripture 
befitting, he said. I am thirsty. A jar full of vinegar stood there. So putting a sponge soaked in vinegar on a hyssop stick, they held it up to his mouth. After Jesus had taken the vinegar, he said, It is accomplished. And bowing his head, he gave up the spirit. was preparation day and to prevent the bodies remaining on the cross during the Sabbath. Since that Sabbath was a day of special solemnity, the Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken away. Consequently, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with him and then of the other when they came to jesus they found he was already dead and so instead of breaking his head one of the soldiers pierced his son with a lance and immediately they came out blood and water this is the evidence of one who saw it trustworthy evidence and he knows this. He speak the truth. And he gives it so that you may believe as well. Because all this happened to fulfill the word of the scripture. Not one bone of his will be broken. And again, in another place scripture says they will look on the one whom they have pierced after this joseph of arithmetia who was a disciple of jesus thought a secret one because he was afraid of the jews asked pilate to let him remove the body of jesus Pilate gave permission, so they came and took it away. Nicodemus came as well, the same one who had first come to Jesus at night time. And he brought a mixture of men and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloth, following the Jewish burial custom. At the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden. And in this garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. Since it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was near at hand, they laid Jesus. A stanza before we go into the seven words from the cross. A stanza.
first word. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. This particular hour, Jesus Christ at the cross, he's giving out a petition in prayer. He has been beaten and He's giving out something from the bottom of his spirit in prayer. And what he opens, when he opens up his mouth, he says this very first word. And he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Interesting enough, putting myself in the picture of Jesus at this particular time when I have been beaten. I think the only prayer I can pray is, help me God. Or I can look at them and say, who we'll see you when I come as a king? I can look at them in the eyes of, I'm going to pay back. But Jesus Christ takes a different dimension and his dimension is forgive them. Children of God, it brings out a sense of, an, a sense of Jesus Christ not being selfish but taking in consideration of the very core of Christianity, which is service. So he looks at them and says, yes, they have done this to me. Yes, they have beaten me. Yes, they have taken me into this particular pen. But my attitude towards them is, Father, forgive them. What am I trying to challenge all of you that are viewing us in this in this period of the Good Friday, this is the time that we have to exercise the forgiving spirit. Those that have hurt us the most, this is not the time for us to call upon the dangerous prayers, to pray that they shall not see tomorrow. But this is the time for us to say, Father, forgive them. I know they hurt me the most, but forgive them. I know this is painful, but forgive them. The, 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 the greatest issue is forgiving people that are not coming to you and say they are sorry. But Jesus Christ is saying, forgive them, for they do not know what they have done. For they do not know what they are doing. Children of God, wherever you are, whosoever has broken your heart, knowing or unknowing, just ask God to forgive them. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just imagine myself being in the position of this man called a thief, condemned by the community, and they exhorted to have him crucified, and he should be dead. But when Jesus heard him making confession that Jesus remember me when you come again in your kingdom. Jesus was touched and he was chair because for this cause I came, I came, so that you might have life and have it in abundance. And so Jesus is saying, the community and the world has condemned you. But look, I have overcome the world. 
and your sins are forgiven. You've been called names by the community, a thief, a prostitute. And people see you not to be of value, but share and hold on to your faith because I have overcome. So you were supposed to die. I have died on your place. You were a sinner, but all your sins are forgiven. And therefore, do not worry, because there is an assurance that today you will be with me in paradise. My, oh my, what a great love. When I was lost, when I was destroyed, when I thought I will go to hell, Jesus is bringing me back again and saying my love is sufficient. Cheer, because today I will be with you in paradise. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It is quite encouraging for Jesus at the cross to address family relations, particularly of children and parents, but also of the greater family. Jesus left the word of responsibility to both parents and children, for parents to take care of the children entrusted to them and children to take care of parents entrusted to them. We see John being entrusted with the responsibility of taking care of the mother, but also of Mary being given the responsibility of taking care of John. The entrustment is not just on responsibility of families to grow, but also in obedience, respect, love, affection, gratitude, and self-respect among other family friends. Particularly during this time that as the globe we face some the down tools of work, others the slash of work, where we spend much more time at home. We've got to be with our families much more and other relations. This is an opportunity to get back to that growth and that cementing of our relationships. It is also a reminder, particularly during this Easter period, to get back to restoring our relationships. Because the strength of any society, of any community, lies in the strength of families. And so Jesus reminds us once again from the words he spoke at the cross of such responsibilities within the family, of taking care of one another, of being grateful for one another, particularly even as we talk about embracing each other, social distance, as one way of taking care of our brothers or of being a brother's keeper. This is too is a reminder. Let us take care of our children. Let us take care of our parents, but let us take care of one another brethren, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A stanza.
fourth word of Jesus on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. Mark chapter 15, verse 34. These are the words that Jesus had spoken on the cross of Calvary during the time when he was in great pain. He uttered this statement to say, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Beloved in the Lord, from this context, we learn two things. The first thing is that when Jesus was in pain, he looked to God because he knew that help will always come from God. Whenever we pass through hard times, challenges, pains, where do we look for? Where do we get our help? From what we have heard, Jesus is teaching us that his help is coming from God. Hence, he cried to his Father. The second point that we are reading from this uh, Jesus' words is that Jesus was separated from the Father because of the sin that he had carried. Remember, when Jesus was doing his ministry, in several instances, he had said, I am doing this because of the Father who is in me. Whatever I do, I don't do it on my own. And the Father who liveth in me is the one who does this. But here it is, Jesus, see the Father leave him because of the sin that he had carried for this world. Beloved in the Lord, the sins that man commits separate us from God. Whatever sin that we commit, it makes us sometimes to cry to God and don't see help from our God. It's my prayer that through this word that Jesus had uttered on the cross, may the Lord help us to avoid any sin in our lives that may separate us from the Lord. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. word on the cross. I am thirsty. John 19 verse 28. After knowing that all was now finished, Jesus cried, I am thirsty. This thirst leaves us not to physical thirst only. And in this point, his physical body was fighting to live for us and for our salvation. He became man. He was not only very God or very God, but he was both human and divine. He is our example, and even as he said that I'm thirsty, that was the reality of it. He was thirsty. As the Nicene Creed state that he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. And uh, you can bear with me that as human, the moment whereby we have got the thirst, the thirst that we normally have, it's both spiritual and physical. In other words, Jesus was not hiding behind his divinity, pretending to suffer on the cross, but truly bearing the penalty of our sin in his humanity as he slowly suffered death for us 
on the cross. When he said, I am thirst, it was his soul that was burning and his heart that was on fire. He was thirsting for the souls of men, you and me, so that we may be saved. At this point, the shepherd who is Jesus Christ was lonely without his sheep, the disciples. And when we read Luke chapter 19 verse 10, it states that the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. And no wonder even when he was thirsty, he was thirsty for our souls. He was thirsty for our salvation that we might be saved. He came not to call the just, but sinners, and his heart thirsts for them now even more than ever. Our Lord has told us, even in Matthew chapter 9, verse 37, that the harvest indeed is great, but the workers are few. That even when he was at the cross of Calvary, when he looked around the people that came, he said that indeed I'm thirsty because indeed the harvest is plenty. And therefore, beloved, as we are celebrating today the Good Friday, we can ask ourselves a question that today we remember that that's the day when Jesus Christ died. Someone dying and then we call it Good Friday. Sometimes in our normal or in the logic sense, it cannot make sense. Someone dying, and then we call it fright. But him dying on the cross, it is a significance for us because we know that, that it is upon the cross where scriptures were fulfilled. It is upon the cross that indeed today we are saved. So we see that Jesus' death was a direct fulfillment of the will of the Father as promised in the scripture. Yes, Jesus is the point and the central figure of the Bible. Beloved, even those who are watching, wherever you are watching us from, may this Good Friday for this year be fruitful and may it carry that significance in our lives. May God bless you.
The Bible lets us know that he was able to endure the cross with his pain in Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 2 because of the joy that was set before him. The joy that by going through that process he took, he will set you free. He will set me free. He would have sons after him who will be free to serve God. And so it's important for us not to take it for granted what Jesus did for us on the cross. The key question to ask today as we mark Good Friday is have we appropriated that which Jesus did on the cross? Have we come to Jesus? Have we known him? He paid a huge price to ensure that we are free. And that was why he said, it is finished. It's important for us to also know that with God we are able to finish our race strong. Even as Jesus finished his. Even as Paul the Apostle said, I have finished the race. What is now left for me is that crown. And so it's my prayer that even today, as we reflect on the purpose and our individual races, on God's purpose for our life and our individual races, let us be encouraged that with God by our sides, we too can finish strong. Amen.
his assignment. He comes back and says, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. It's done. Or rather, was it just beginning? Was it a new beginning for us? It was finished for him, but for us, new life starts with the cross. The effect of Christ's death was just about to begin. Already the centurion, a Roman who has been supervising the crucifixion, who had walked the way of the cross with him, declared, surely this man was innocent. And others cried out, beat their breasts, what have we done, they declared. Indeed, what have we done? In this season of the coronavirus and our lockdowns, what have we done to one another? Or is it, what have we not done for one another? Pain, the suffering that Jesus endured to get to this point of what, how he suffered that. And so there is a new word created to depict, to express his suffering on the cross. And that's how the word excruciating came from. Pain that came out of the cross. Today we are called to suffer that pain for one another. To change our attitude in how we manage what God has entrusted us. Today, we repent of the mess we have created in managing the earth that he entrusted us. Today, we repent and suffer with him in pain of repentance. May God bring a healing upon this earth. cross was the end of the assignment for Jesus, but it was the beginning of our resurrection hope. Sessions. Let us pray. Today, Christ offers his life to the Father for the salvation of humankind. In union with him, we now pray that all may receive the benefit of his passion. Let us pray for the church. Let us pray, dear friends, for the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that God the Almighty Father may guide it and gather it together so that we may worship Him in peace and tranquility. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all the nations in Christ, your Son. Guide the way of your church, help it to persevere in faith 
to proclaim your name and to bring your salvation to the people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the, for the clergy and the laity of the church. In our prayer, let us remember Archbishop of Canterbury, Archbishop Justin, Archbishop of the, of the province, Archbishop Chamber, the Bishop of the Diocese, Bishop David and John, the Dean of the Cathedral, the priests and deacons. For those who have a special ministry in the church and for all God's people. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Listen to our prayers and help all in their own vocation to do your work and more further. Lord, in your mercy. Let us also pray for those preparing for baptism and confirmation. Let us pray for those preparing for baptism and confirmation that God, in His mercy, may make them res responsive to His love. Almighty and eternal God, you continually add to your church those whom you call. Increase your faith and understanding of those preparing for baptism and confirmation and make them faithful members of your chosen family. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for all our brothers and sisters who share our faith in Jesus Christ. That God may gather and keep together in one church all those who seek truth. Almighty and eternal God, you keep together those you, you have united. Look kindly on all who follow Jesus, your Son. We are consecrated to you by our common baptism. Make us one in faith fullness of faith and keep us one in the fellowship of life. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the face to hear the word of God, that they may continue to grow in the love of his name and confess Jesus as Messiah. Almighty and eternal God, you gave your promise to Abraham and his descendants. Grant that the people you first made your own may arrive at the fullness of your redemption. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ, that the light of the Holy Spirit may show them the way of salvation. Almighty and eternal God, whom all seek, even unknowingly, open the eyes of those who know not Christ, that they may find in him the Lord the way, the life, and the truth. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Almighty and eternal God, 
you have made us for yourself and our own hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Have mercy on all who live in doubt and unbelief, that they may know you, the one creator, God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Lord, in your mercy, Let us pray for those who serve in public office, that God will guide their minds and hearts, so that all may live in truth, in peace, in freedom. Almighty and eternal God, in your goodness, watch over those in authority, so that the people everywhere may enjoy true freedom, security, and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray, dear friends, that God, that God the Almighty Father may heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety, tra safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty and right in ring. The world of forceful hunger and disease. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Hear the, prayer, the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask for this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
отчаяния. Фейсбук. Dear eternal God, you have restored us to life by the triumphant death and resurrection of Christ. Continue this healing work within us. Grant that we who participate in this mystery may never cease to give you dedicated service. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Send down your abundant blessing on your people who have devotedly recalled the death of your son. Here, in the cathedral, and in our homes, in the sure hope of the resurrection, grant them pardon, bring them comfort, may their faith grow stronger, and their eternal salvation be assured.
think they looks like they're reproaches. Oh my people, what have I done against thee? Or wherein have I worried thee? Testify against me. Because I brought thee forth from the land of Egypt, thou hast prepared a cross for my for thy Saviour. Holy God, Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Mighty, Holy and Immortal, have mercy upon us. Holy and Immortal, have mercy upon us. Because I led thee through the desert forty years, and fed thee with manna, and brought thee into a land exceeding good, thou hast prepared a cross for thy Saviour. Holy God, Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Mighty, Holy and Immortal, have mercy upon us. Holy and Immortal, have mercy upon us. What more could I have done for thee that I have not done? I indeed did plant thee all my vineyard, exceeding fair, and thou art become very bitter unto me. For vinegar thou givest to quench my thirst, and hast pierced with a spear the side of thy Saviour. Holy God, Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Mighty, Holy and Immortal, have mercy upon us. Holy and Immortal, have mercy upon us. I did scourge Egypt with her firstborn for thy sake, and thou hast scourged me and delivered me up. O my people, what have I done against thee? Or wherein have I worried thee? Testify against me. I led thee out of Egypt, drowning Pharaoh in the Red Sea. And thou hast delivered me up unto the chief priests. O my people, what have I done against thee? Or wherein have I worried thee? Testify against me. I opened the sea before thee, and thou hast opened my side with a spear. O oh, my people, what have I done against thee? Or wherein have I wounded thee? Testify against me. I went before thee in a pillar of cloud, and thou hast led me unto the judgment hall of Pilate. O oh, my people, what have I done against thee? Or wherein have I wounded thee? Testify against me. I fed thee with manna in the desert, and thou hast stricken me with blows and scourges. O oh, my people, what have I done against thee? Or wherein have I wounded thee? Testify against me. I gave thee to drink of the water of salvation from the rock, and thou hast given me gall and vinegar to drink. O oh, my people, what have I done against thee? Or wherein have I wounded thee? Testify against me. For thee I smote the king of the Canaanites, and thou hast smitten my head with a reed. O oh, my people, what have I done against thee? Or wherein have I wounded thee? Testify against me. I gave thee a royal scepter, and thou hast given unto my head a crown of thorns. O oh, my people, what have I done against thee? Or wherein have I wounded thee? Testify against me. I exalted thee with great power, and thou hast hanged me upon the gibbet of the cross.